Hi there, this is Popo, I hope you're all fine. Welcome back to the Matches Miniature Series, where we cover some Matches games that happen in real life, on real boards, against real people, actually the friends of a chess club. So now this is the time where we come to something very serious. Because at that time, uh, my friends played 5 of 6 Matches faction, I, I didn't have counted uh, yet. And then uh, they were playing very good matches games. Uh, even some more, some people don't have uh, enough level to play some card games. Like, but compared to their actual chess level, they were playing some very decent matches games. So uh, this is where uh, I decided to introduce more tricky factions, and uh, I decided to go uh, immediately with the Yetis. And it is at first, uh, you might say that uh, this is a strong faction because you have the lip movement and stuff, but if you don't know how to undeal it, uh, then you can be uh, easily crushed. And uh, we somewhat saw that at the tournament that you have to be very careful about nasty stuff that can happen because your faction is actually very slow. But if you can use good uh, pieces coordination and try to get a very good control of your own field and just uh, advance steadily and very slowly, then you're going to uh, overcome and then win the game. Uh, so I decided to uh, introduce this section to my friends and then uh, enters a new protagonist, uh, which is a guy which has like 2000 ELO in real life uh, on the FIDE. So this is a, a very strong player. And at some point uh, he's very fascinated also by um, chess variants. Uh, he likes uh, to play a Shogi uh, and I guess maybe Chenchi also. He likes uh, some kind of variants and I guess he even plays on Pai Chess. So uh, this guy knows, uh, knows a little uh, the universe of the chess variants, not as close as we know with Chesscraft, Mad Chess, uh, Chess Evolved Online and stuff, but even uh, to be a very good player. And then he was very interested by uh, Mad Chess, and this is actually his first game of Mad Chess. You're going to see that this game is an absolute banger. So uh, he's going to play against uh, the famous friend uh, which plays some bold moves uh, using the centaurs and the dragons, if you remember. So this is uh, the first game of, uh, I don't know how to call him, the, the two hello, uh, 200, uh, um, 2000, excuse me, uh, hello guy. Uh, like, this is very interesting. And here, uh, with matches, now you have to think, uh, I don't know how to say in English, but outside the the way you play in standard chess. In France, we say, uh, penser en dehors du cadre. This is uh, better as an expression. So um, here you have to think a little more outside of the classic chess opening because it can really go wrong very quickly. And this is exactly what happened in this game. This game is nine moves long. And this ended with checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even imagine with the hits, you can handle that. This really happened on the board. Let me see how it went. We have pawn to d4, pawn to d5, very classic stuff, does to f3, pawn to c5, nothing to say, and here already we have a new thing with root to f4, just accepting the pawn to be lost. And here this is not that bad, because uh, after pawn takes and uh, sage uh, recaptures, what are we gonna do? This sage is very powerful on the board, uh, this task can allow uh, your uh, allies to, uh, to leap, and this brute at some point controlled these squares. And uh, even more, if you want, for example, to, uh, excuse me, to push e6, then the brute is likely to go here, and then this pawn is going to disappear on the next turn. So you have to be very careful of what you're going to play. So here, um, maybe uh, this was a bad move, the idea was pretty good, but actually the implication is very bad. You have to defend this pawn at some point to be sure that something uh, goes well. Uh, maybe uh, you want to play this, but maybe you can be afraid of some moves like this. Like, something unclear with it. And uh, even more, you can try to play the test to c3 and put even more pressure on this pawn. And at some point, you have to defend this way. And you can't really defend this way because this is likely to, uh, going to happen. So I can understand that this option uh, has, uh, hasn't been so. Also, you can decide to play this. This is also an option. A knight to c6 wasn't that bad. But um, I don't know. Uh, the opponent decided to go for uh, queen to b6. Queen to b6 uh, is a very bad move. Very, very bad. What's the idea with this? You want to get a queen trade. Okay, this can make sense. And uh, also, uh, you somehow attack this. So you can decide to defend this way, just go back, and then it would be likely to push the pawn later after uh, defending it with some kind of very cool structure. I can understand that. But maybe uh, he wouldn't think that actually that would be uh, okay for white. And white would just take on d5. 
And now, uh, <laughs> I have to say, I was here at this point, the humans were very surprised this movie was saying, what? The Queen is the strongest piece of the board, this is much stronger than you think, even you can get some good trade, but none of my pieces are developed, and still you refuse the Queen trade. Okay, even uh, if the Queen captures, then the, the Rook would be likely uh, to go on the field, but like this has no sense not to, uh, to trade it. So you say, okay. I'm going to take on uh, B2 and then I have a tempo of uh, your crystal. But remember that uh, the crystal is safe because it can actually slide here thanks to the tusk. So everything is safe. At least you would be likely to uh, to lose this spawn, but this is okay for a pawn. So uh, queen takes on B2 and then you can decide to do this. But here the 2000 elo guy went for a move that completely killed the humans just you can't do anything this is game over and i have to say maybe this is just forced mate you can't do anything everything's gonna happen so feel free to pause the video and find on move six the move that killed the humans you can't do anything okay i hope you all get that uh, by seeing the move brute to c7 and i have to say this is a very brute move uh, what the point? Okay, you attack this bishop and if you don't move the bishop, for example, you go here, then this bishop is going to be lost. So of course you have to do this. But at the same time, you threat to checkmate the king here. <laughs> this is just completely crazy. And uh, this is not as easy as survive. Because, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say you want to play this move and make a, an escape square for the king. Uh, then, okay, th th this is perfectly okay for your opponent. Because uh, he's going to go here. And after king moves here, I guess you don't have any choice to go here. Uh, then you just have to take that. And now you can take, else you're going to lose two rooks. Okay, you can take with the queen, but this is not that easy. So this is why uh, in this position, you uh, have only one move that really defends the, uh, the position, at least the, the bishop, is to play a uh, bishop to d7. And here, this is where the, the fun begins, because now how are you going to defend the following move? Like You can pause again the video and find the next move uh, Black just found, uh, White just found for this. Like, you can't do anything. Okay, the move is Tusk to e5. And now what? This threat is still on the board, and now you even threat to capture here. <laughs> And now at some point the best move is to capture with the queen and just trade the queen. Like, game over, you can't do anything. And even if you try like to get a check, you have to get this check and then I'm going to push this and everything's defended. So this is just completely ridiculous. So at this point, um, the, opponent, uh, the opponent decided to go for a queen to be for check, of course, the pawn push, and now uh, game over. Just game over. So uh, we have knight to c6 at least uh, trying to defend this spot, uh, but of course uh, this happens on the board and this is checkmate. Do you believe this? Nine moves and the game is completely lost. Right, let me get to the beginning. It becomes very, very okay and then because there was this trade and three active pieces on the board and just play the stupid queen to b6, letting this bond be captured, then this is a complete mess. Here, uh, queen to b2 is even worse. And then now, just just see, it completely crumbles. I'm very actually impressed. I would never think that uh, the Yetis would be able to mate this fast. So this is why you would never have to under underestimate uh, the coordination of your pieces, especially when, when there's a tusk on the board and the position is not closed. So my assumption would be that a close game is good for the Yetis at the point as the, your opponent doesn't have enough activity to counter back. But an open game would benefit the Yetis only in the beginning when uh, your opponent pieces haven't developed a little more yet. Maybe that assumption is wrong and you would have a lot of counter examples. But looking for this game, uh, <laughs> I might start to think that uh, the Yetis are real bangers at this point. So I hope you like this video. Uh, we're going to see each other next time to show uh, another game, uh, which is not uh, the same type of game. This is very cool to see. Uh, 
or like you're going to see uh, I really like this game. This is not the most incredible game you'll find on the channel, but this is still cool to see uh, how you can deal with it. So see you then. Bye.